today we celebrate what's called uh, Gaudete Sunday. So it's a Sunday of rejoicing. So we heard in St. Paul's exhortation, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. Even our refrain from our psalm was, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So there's two times a year that uh, in the liturgy where we wear this pink, this rose color. So it signifies rejoicing, kind of a, a springtime, a, a newness of life, the spirit of let our hearts rise up in joy, rejoice. And it always comes in Advent and Lent, which are seasons of waiting, of preparation for something, preparation for the feast, the coming of Christmas for us here in a couple weeks, and the coming of uh, Easter when we're preparing in Lent. So this rose color signifies rejoicing, that we can rejoice because the feast is coming, that Christ is coming soon. So even in our Advent wreath, we had the two candles of purple. Now we get pink, and then we'll have one more Sunday of purple before the coming of the feast, before the coming of Christmas. So the spirit of rejoicing, gaudete is the Latin word for rejoice, have joy, exult. How do we actually um, have joy? How do we rejoice unceasingly as St. Paul uh, exhorts the Thessalonians and for us here gathered today? Well, one of the keys is right after um, he says that, he says, um, in all circumstances, give thanks. Give thanks in all circumstances. So it's the gift of gratitude that can open our hearts up to have a spirit of joy, especially in this Advent season as we prepare, as we prepare for Christmas. So this little maybe exercise of gratitude, we might say, how do we actually name some of the graces in our life uh, to slow us down? I don't know about you, but uh, it's been a really full December, and I can't believe that just a week from today we'll be celebrating Christmas. It's like, whoo, it's here, <laughs> it's here already. So gratitude can actually slow us down to name some of the graces we're receiving and then uh, to be able to actually experience joy in the present moment. So St. Paul speaks about like having an examined life. He says that we're supposed to test everything but retain what is good. So a line we might know from like Socrates is the unexamined life is not worth living. And I'd say that that's true, right? Otherwise, it's just one moment to the next, one day to the next, week to week, month to month. And before we know it, it's like, whoa, where am I? I just remember, for me, just starting here in July, it feels like yesterday, but it's been six months. It's like, wow, has it really been six months? So what will actually root us, allow us to examine our life and slow down so we can experience the joy? the joy of the Lord, the rejoicing that God invites us to. So a great uh, spiritual practice is what's called the examine prayer. So it's not an examination of conscience, so we might be familiar with that. But before we go to confession, right, we go through the Ten Commandments and, okay, be, to be convicted of what we need to repent for. But it's called the examine prayer, and St. Ignatius of Loyola was the one who uh, kind of coined this, this way of praying. So it's, a, it, it's an examination of consciousness that he proposes that it's really, really, really beneficial for a soul to take time every day to do this prayer of the examine, where they stop and note, how has God been loving them that day? So it's not a time to say, well, how have I measured up to the Ten Commandments? Where have I sinned? Where do I need to convict myself? No, it's actually a time to take every day where a person has to try to notice, how has God been loving me today? So he's got a couple of steps in this prayer of the examine, and one of them is you, you take a time to bring yourself into the presence of God. But then the second one is you actually take um, a time of gratitude where you have to actually, with the Lord's help, you invite him into your day and you go back through your day and you try to note at least three things that you're grateful for that have been blessings to you that day. 
So this intentional way of actually asking God to go through the day with you to say, I'm going to know three graces that God has given to me today that I can rejoice in, that I can have gratitude for. And then the next step is to, with God, we'll plan the next day. Think about, okay, Lord, with these graces in mind that you've blessed me with today, how can I journey with you tomorrow to be more faithful to your presence? And then the last one is just, just giving thanks to God, going to, going, going to sleep or wherever time you, you do the exam. And uh, it, it would depend upon if you do it before you go to bed or in the middle of the day. So this beautiful prayer of the exam, one of the steps is gratitude, is actually naming in a particular way, how has God blessed you today? And um, St. Ignatius challenges us to actually be like specific. So we can like in a general way say, well, I'm really blessed to be a priest. I'm blessed to be a father, a mother, to have a family, whatever those generic things are. And those are good to give thanks for. But to actually get specific in, well, how has God actually like walked with me today? Can I name some of those things? And if I can, then I can actually like I can taste them again. I can savor them. I can let them stay with me and like become a well that I can actually start living from. And then I'm like, oh, I'm aware that God's blessed me in these ways. And then tomorrow I can be like more attuned to maybe he's going to bless me in the same ways or different ways. But now I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm kind of looking to see how is he going to bless me today. I know for me that uh, in these December months, it's been really full. And sometimes life can just be like, taken off like 100 miles an hour, zero to 60. Um, and I can like do a lot of things in a day. And at the end of the day, it's like, Lord, I'm so grateful to be a priest. Thank you. Amen. And I go to sleep, <laughs> you know. But if I actually take the time to say, wait a minute, no, I, I need to actually spend five, 10 minutes and like go through my day again with his help and to name some of those particular graces. It's like, oh yeah, like that time, in the first grader class and that question of one of those young boys was so beautiful lord he was just open and, and asked a question about your love your life oh yeah and then i went to the hospital i anointed a woman who was dying and i was there with her family and they were so appreciative like wow i need to remember that i need to savor that so like actually concrete ways to think about how are we actually uh, going through life in like a recollected and examined way so I just encourage all of us to think about, well, how can we maybe make that a practice in this Advent season, this, in this Christmas season, but then also just in our Christian living? How do we have time every day to actually name three graces, to try to be concrete, specific, ways that God has actually blessed us so we can be open to how he'll continue to bless us, how he'll continue to be with us. As Paul says, we're to test everything, but retain what is good. <laughs> So with the Lord, we can go through our day and we can say, oh yeah, Lord, there was a lot of good things. There were some bad things too. We can relate that to him and have a prayer and let him, let him see us in all that. But we're to actually retain and to savor what is good, to hold on to that. So gratitude opens us up for that gift so we can enter into a spirit of rejoicing, of rejoicing in the Lord. So perhaps you do that this afternoon or this evening before you go to bed. But one way, one thing that you can maybe be concrete with is the gift of us celebrating here at Mass, to have our heart open to maybe savor in gratitude uh, our reception of the Lord here at this altar in this Holy Eucharist, that that could be a springboard for us in our examine to say, Lord, one thing I'm grateful for is savoring this moment of communion with you at your altar, and then to see if maybe we can get two or three more as well. So as we approach this Eucharist, let our hearts be open in gratitude to savor the good things the Lord does for us each and every day.